In this video, we're heading to Central Oregon, and we're gonna drive over every interesting rock we can find on the way. And that's because we're gonna be talking about rocks, and we're gonna be talking about not being that guy. You don't wanna be that guy in the group that has a broken CV axle, is high centered, or that slid off one rock only to land in a minefield of worse rocks, or that somehow always seems to be the student driver in the group. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying these things don't happen to us, they do. Each of us just tries not to be the guy it always happens to. We do our best to evenly distribute these accomplishments among the group. So in this video, we have some fun with that. In fact, we prank Steve by putting a student driver sticker on his rig, and he has no idea he's driving around with a student driver sticker. And then we just start layering on the student driver jokes until he finally discovers the sticker. But we also give some serious pointers in the video about how to deal with rocks. And here's the thing about rocks. It doesn't matter if you're a soft roader, an overlander, an off roader, or what style of driving off pavement you enjoy. When you leave the pavement, sooner or later, you're going to be on a trail that gradually becomes a rock garden or a staircase or a rock wall. And so we're going to talk about how to handle rocks how to get through rock gardens, what to do if you do not have a locker, how to back down a large step up or a large rock without tearing your front bumper off, how to bump it to get up over a rock wall. We'll explain how to execute that correctly. We're also going to review the brunt boots that you've been hearing so much about, both how great they are on your feet and how to keep them away from your brother. But first, here's how we got the student driver sticker on my brother Steve's car. He was checking out the map at the OHV park that we went to. I saw my moment of opportunity and went into covert ops mode and stealthily stuck the magnetic sticker to his bumper. Sam was running distraction tactics by keeping him engaged well, in conversation. Yeah. I'm not sure I'd want to drive on the highway without a sway bar. It was a flawless operation. Steve. Yeah. How are you feeling about today? Great. It's gonna be some some difficult trails, but you you're feeling confident. Got a front locker. Nice. There goes Sammy. I'm sure you'll be fine. Yeah, he was feeling pretty confident for a student driver. So I start making a lot of student driver comments to see if he'll catch on. Well, we need to find some of the hard trails instead of these student driver trails. <laughs> he does not have a clue. Hey, let's do some advanced trails today. None of those student driver trails, okay? Not a clue. This is this is for advanced drivers. Not most student drivers wouldn't do this. Still not a clue. Well, Steve hasn't caught on to the prank yet, but he's approaching some rocks, a little rock garden here. So let's talk about the first tip for the day, and that is when you're dealing with rocks, you want to keep your tires on top of the rocks. You want to keep your vehicle as level as possible and you want all tires touching or planted. You can see a little tire lift right there and I'll replay that so you can see it again because it's important. The reason you want all tires planted and your vehicle level is it creates the most traction and stability. If you come up to a big rock like the one Steve's on now and you're off camber and you get a wheel lift, things can get squirrely in a hurry and you could be in a rollover position. So you're looking for a path through the rock garden where you can keep your tires on top of the rocks, keep your vehicle as level as possible, and keep all tires touching whenever possible. And now here's the pro tip and here's where most people mess up. As we go around the vehicle, you'll notice you have to take into account not just the path of the front tires, but also the path of the rear tires. Here I don't want Steve to come straight off that rock and drop down hard. It would be better if he was just a little bit more driver side, but I have to keep in mind those rocks by his rear tire. What I forget is that Steve has a front camera. If he, if he came over it, if he came over it right here, You have to go way driver. Well, and then watch this rock right here. Now driver, driver, driver.
very slow. Slow, slow, slow. With a lot of, keep coming. Nicely done. That, that is not for student drivers. That's for advanced drivers. A student driver should not be doing that. I mean, seriously, at this point, wouldn't you be wondering why your brother keeps referencing student drivers? Got some new scuffs on the wheels. Yeah, you got some scuffs on the wheels. I was telling you, a student driver should not be doing that. I know, that's why I was doing it and you weren't. Really? Yeah. No clue. Wait, have you gone over that yet? I said a student driver should not be doing that. Right, so you didn't. Come on, I prank you on every trip. A student driver should not be doing that. Yeah, I agree. That's Excuse why you me. Done it. A student driver should not be doing that. <laughs> oh, you think? You're yeah, funny? I think I'm funny. <laughs> Payback's gonna be a bit. That's funny though. It looks good there. It does. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna leave it. Tell you what, he's a good brother for sure. Jeep just rolls on over it like butter. Well, all right, Sam's gonna go up this same obstacle in his Jeep, and he's just put 35s on this Jeep. And he has plans for lockers, but he's currently running open differentials front and back. I guess they're actually limited slip. But this will give us the chance to talk about what to do if you don't have a locker. And what you're going to see in a second here is Sam gets some wheel spin on the front axle. And on an open differential, torque is shared equally across the axle. So the wheel that's stuck against that rock doesn't get any more torque than the amount of torque that it takes to turn that free spinning wheel. You heard that right. Now in Sam's case, the limited slip did kick in and he actually got going. But without a locker, you often end up just stuck with your wheels spinning. So what do you do about that? Well, the technique that you're gonna see Sam use several times throughout this video is you look for opportunities to get both wheels crammed up against rocks at the same time. That way, neither wheel has the opportunity to free spin and you can maximize your torque. If you have to, you can artificially create this scenario by jamming a rock up against whichever wheel wants to free spin. All right, Sam made easy work of that with his 35s, and now Steve's gonna take me over it, and I'm gonna show you why you do want to invest in rock sliders. Now ease, keep coming, you're almost on your downhill side of that rock. Slow, 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 slow. slider home free oh, many freaking Christmas all right we are gonna move on to some of the big boy stuff rock step ups and bumping it and all the things that really can damage your vehicle <laughs> but first we want to give a big shout out to Brunt for these great boots so Brunt was kind enough to send us some boots to try. Steve's wearing a pair right now. We're gonna unbox this pair for me to try. I like the, uh, the packaging, the tools you wear, right? This is not a shoe box. It's a toolbox. Tools you wear, pretty nice setup. And this will, this will be what I'm gonna wear. And Steve's got the exact same pair on his feet right now. Anyways, I'm looking forward to trying these. Steve says they're great. Thank you, Brunt. Steve, go long. <laughs> Good catch. Easy. All right. In the, uh... Go long. Go deep. Go long. <laughs> so all Brunt boots are adjustable for wide feet. <clears throat> I happen to have wide feet, so what you do is take the inner insole out and then you pull this liner out and it expands for wider feet and for me that is absolutely perfect reinsert and voila perfect fit 
And I should mention that these boots are Sydney approved and she settles for nothing but the best. This is pretty close to waist high. So you're saying it's super high? It's high. Because you're like five foot six, aren't you? <laughs> uh, driver tire needs like three inches and you'll and you'll touch. Keep going. All right, you're good now. All right, the first two things to be aware of with rock step ups are your approach angle and your vehicle length. You need a good approach angle to get both tires firmly on the wall to start your climb. As your front tires come up over the top of the wall, your vehicle length then becomes an issue because it correlates to your ramp breakover angle. In other words, will the undercarriage hit the rock wall and stop your forward momentum, or will it clear the rock wall and allow your rear tires to come up to the wall and climb the wall? Caught my tent. Oh yeah, your tent's fine. All right, keep going. Slow, slow, slow. You're gonna hit your gas tank skid. And, and you're on the skid. There's no way. Just bump it, <laughs> send it. Just send it, yeah. Just a little bit of throttle. Well, okay, so my breakover angle is no good. And you may have heard Steve mention that my back end was dragging. So my departure angle is also not going to allow me to get over this wall. But you know what? We're going to do exactly what these guys are asking and we're going to bump it and get up over this wall. But first, since we're here, I want to show you how to back off one of these without tearing your entire front bumper off. There's a trick to it. Actually, two tricks. Here's the issue. If you come off this wall and set down hard, your suspension's going to compress and that means your front bumper's going to slam right into that wall. So you have two choices. You've got to grab a foot full of brake and just roll off and set down as gentle as ever. Or you got to give it just a teeny bit of gas and get your front bumper clear of that wall. The brake method is by far the preferred method. Here's how you do it. It's going to be a hard drop no matter what. Yeah. All right. Just come slow. Yeah. You might hit your bumper. Slow, slow, slow. Tell me about my tire. All right, you're you're on the edge. This is gonna hurt. This is gonna be bad. I'm not responsible for what happens next. Go slow. Just mash your foot on the brake. All right, keep rolling. Keep rolling. Straighten your tires out. A little bit more. Pull straighter. All right, yeah, I like that. Keep going. All right, your, your driver's side's about to come down. Keep going. Slow, slow, slow. Slow, slow, slow. Slow, slow, slow. All right, keep going. Slow, slow, slow. All right, crank it. No, you're good for now, you're good. Oh, beautiful. Man, I'm a good spotter. Okay, before I go up it, Sam tackles it. And remember, he does not have a front locker, so he tucks both front tires hard up against the wall. No, it's right there! The issue now is he's got a huge hole on his back tire now. No, it's your back tire now, Sam. It's the back, and we need the rock over here to get that front one to so in situations like this, to correct the breakover angle problem that you have, you can stack rocks or use max tracks. I've seen people use big tree branches and things like that. Here we stacked a few rocks and Sam took it over the top. Uh, uh, up, up, up! Bump it, Sam! Clear, guys, he's gonna bump it. Bump it! That's how you do it. That is how you do it. Okay, Sam did a nice job on that. What you don't want to do is come up over a wall like that and get a little bit of air and have tires spinning in the air and then come down and have those tires come to a hard stop on the ground. That's exactly how you break a CV axle. Okay, my turn. And as I approach the wall, you may have heard when I was on the wall before that I asked the guys to watch my rooftop tent because of the low hanging branches. I'm again going to ask the guys to watch my rooftop tent and just watch what a great job these guys do for me. Hey, if you're gonna be a sissy and have a rooftop tent, watch your own damn tent. 
Passenger. I'm Gus Gray. Driver. Oh! Oh, like you hit it too hard. A lot of noise, no damage. What'd you say about him watching his own tent? All right, stop for a second. Let's see what you got. It's nothing. It's a scratch. It's oh, not the oh. scratch. It's just the... It's merely a flesh wound. You're supposed to buy open oh. oh, crap. That's it is a flesh wound. Ready? I'm not going to keep walking around. Oh! You had an opportunity. That was literally just a scratch. While we were goofing around on this wall, we met Aaron and Coy. This is Coy with his FJ. He's about to attempt the wall. It's a locker on the back. He's got the Mickey Thompson Bajas, so over 35s. Yeah, I think he's got a good shot at it. There you go. They have a podcast called The Off-Road Podcast, which broadcast on social media, including Facebook and YouTube. Definitely check them out. I'll leave the link in the description. My brother Steve's going to be on the June 5th broadcast, which I believe Nicely. airs at 7 p.m. So definitely check that out and harass Steve. Bump it, bump it. We're going to go. Nicely done. Coy made it look easy in the FJ, and Aaron does the same in his truck. Hell yeah. Nicely done. Well, all those rocks were there making it easy. Um, first of all, that was great machete work. Have you ever been cut by a machete before? Uh, yeah, I had a horrible machete injury. Um, you were by yourself though, right? Uh, no, I was attacked by ninjas. <laughs> all right, a couple housekeeping matters as we use this Tozalaz double air compressor to air up. First, we're gonna show some outtakes here at the end of the video and some more of the student driver jokes. And on the Toza Laz, it really is a good value. It's actually a lot faster than my other compressors. We're also gonna show some extra footage of wheeling that just may be of interest to the guys that were on the trip. You can stick around and watch if you want. If not, it's all good fun, guys. Thanks for watching. Steve, most student drivers would not attempt this. But you have good spotters, so you're okay. <laughs> Worst brother of all time. All right, Steve, you're going to want to start by putting it in drive and then go into four high. Then you'll go into neutral and engage four low. At which point you'll want to engage your front locker and your rear locker. So when do I use the clutch? Left blinker. Let's see the left blinker. Pass. He's very confident for a student driver. Steve, you're one of our advanced student drivers. What do you say about your student driving course? The way I successfully achieved that is I turned my radio off and didn't listen to anybody. <laughs> Keep coming forward. You're gonna come up on the passenger side on a rock. Front side, okay. All right, come over slow, let it drop, slow. Slow, you're gonna come right down on top of another one, nice and easy. That line right there. Perfect. <laughs> you're like an inch off the frame, it's awesome. Well executed. You see what a difference a good spotter makes? Flexi on the other side. It's in the air. John, look at that thing. Oh, bumper. It's not. It's not solid on the other side. It's not solid. It's Get up here. Like a slice stuck. Gas. 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 Front skid. Keep coming. You got front wheel in the air. Your back driver's coming up on a rock. Just be ready to throw it in reverse if you have to. This is your specialty, rock garden. Oh yeah. I got the diff. I got my diff up on this. 
and then I got my skid, center skid on that, and then I got my center skid on that one again. I was pivoting on this, it's just like, that's a chunk of rock out of that. All right, driver has requested to come up on top of the ridge of the rock to add extra challenge. He's going up over that? He wants to go up and over. Our student driver came to the inside of the high rock um, because it's a more entry level route. Our next driver is going to come over the top of the rock. Let's hope he breaks his CV. You got one of those? No. We all know without great spotters, never would have made that. Where would he have gotten stuck? On his differential, like he always does. <laughs> It's all good fun, guys. Thanks for watching.